This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, June 2010, F7, just working through the exam. I'm on to question two. There's no written bit of question two, there's no interpretation, there's no chat for five marks, it's just a straightforward 25 mark question. Part A, the income statement, part B, financial position for a company, and we're given the following trial balance. It's a trial balance, it's not um, a draft set of financial statements. So it's trial balance, and ooh, it's not really, you know, it's not truly a trial balance because if you look at the list of figures, you'll see that inventory at 31st of March is in the list of figures at 48,000. If this were a genuine, true trial balance, then inventory, you'll realise, is a post-trial balance adjustment. Um, but this has been done, this inventory has been accounted for. It's a bit naughty, but it's not a big deal. If it were a proper trial balance, you would expect the closing inventory, the inventory at the end of the year, to be given to you by way of a note down the, the bottom there, the bottom half of this page, as the following notes are relevant. And if it were a genuine trial balance, you would expect detail of the inventory to be included within those notes. But it's not. Okay, it's a 25 minute question, sorry, it's a 25 mark question. 45 minutes, the time down there is 1641, so that's 1726, finish time. Uh, we'll see how we go on. Okay, I tend, when I'm doing this type of question, I tend to start at the uh, the end, at the, the end of the notes, and the last note, note number six, is about the details of the construction contract. So I'm going to start with that and get that out of the way. I do that because I find that note one is often complicated, note one, note two is often complicated and involves quite a lot of, uh, of work, whereas the, the, as the notes go further on, they tend to be less and less difficult. Having said that, just looking at note six, it looks like it could be an awkward little, awkward little beast. But anyway, question two, it's called June, and I'm looking at point number six, six. Okay. Contract commenced 1st of October and we're going to March 2010, so it's a six month old contract. It's scheduled to take 18 months to complete. The agreed contract price is 40 million. Specialised plant was started at the, purchased at the start of the contract for 12, residual value of 3 at the end of the contract and should be depreciated using straight line. I'll do that straight away, can't we? It's uh, 12 cost, 3 residual, Therefore, if we need to depreciate nine, this is over 18 months and we're only looking at six months, so it's a third of nine, three million depreciation this year. Okay. Independent service assess the contract is 30% complete. Good. And the customer has not been invoiced for any progress payments, so they're going to have a receivable from customers on the statement of financial position, as well as working one, which tells us about the revenue to recognise and the cost to recognise. The outcome is reasonably certain, so we can recognise some profit. Okay, working one within construction contracts is revenue recognition. And we're looking at 30% of the contract value. The contract is worth 40 million. So 30% of 40 million is 12 million. And that's the revenue to recognise. Costs to recognise will be 30% of total costs of the contract. And the total costs of the contract are 8 plus 15, plus 9, so that's uh, 24, 32, 30% 30 of 32 is 9.6, so profit recognition is 2.4. <coughs> Working 2 is costs to date, and cost to date is 8,000 
plus the 3,000 depreciation, so that's 11, plus attributable profit, which is 2.4. So 13.4, if we had done any invoicing, we would have taken that off. But we haven't done any invoicing, so that's simply amounts due from customers. And that, I think, is working, uh, the working for point number six. Point number five. Provision for tax for the year in the 12 million is required. The balance on current tax represents under our over provision. You know, I always get these confused. Let's have a look. Let's, this is current tax. Last year, let's say last year, there was an income statement charge of, um, let's say, 10,000. And we're told that we have got a, a brought forward figure according to the question of 1.4 credit. So carry down 1.4. Therefore, we must have paid, if 10,000 were right, we must have paid 8,006. So what we're looking at then is a... The balance on current is the under or over provision. So it's an over provision last year and is going to get accounted for this year. It's going to get eliminated this year. We've also got a deferred tax account and we've got brought down on the deferred tax 6,000. And the question tells us, point number five, provision is needed for 12 million on current tax. So this year I want to carry down 12 million. And there's my provision for 12 million brought down on the current tax account. On 31st March, the tax base is 14 million less than the carrying amounts. The income tax is 30%. So 14 million times 30% is 4.2 million. And that's the carry down on my deferred tax account, 4.2 million. So what I'm now going to do is balance off the deferred tax account and take the missing figure of 1.8 to current tax. 1.8, it comes from the deferred tax. And now I can balance off my current tax account. That's 12 million total, 12 million total. Uh, 3.8.8, therefore, is going to go to this year's income statement. So I've got that on the income statement. I've got that on the balance sheet and that on the statement of financial position. And that deals with point number five. Point number four. It's been discovered that goods with a cost of six million, which had been correctly included in the account for the inventory, so inventory is right, have been invoiced in April 2010 to customers at a gross profit of 25% but they've been included in the revenue and receivables for the year 2010, March 2010. Makes you wonder how that can happen, doesn't it? They were invoiced in April, but they've been included within the sales day book and the sales records as March. So inventory is correct. No adjustment. But what is wrong is that revenue is overstated. So revenue needs to come down by uh, the cost of six, been invoiced at a gross profit of 25%. So cost plus profit is selling price. Gross profit of 25% on sales. And we are told that they had a cost of six, which is therefore 75%. So a third of that is two million and eight million. So revenue needs to come down by 8 million. Receivables needs to come down by 8 million. And the inventory is correctly stated, so it's just a cut-off error. Okay, and that's point number four. Point number three, the investments of fair value through profit loss had a fair value of 28. There were no purchases or sales. Well, we'll just do a little T-account. Investments at fair value through profit loss. 
And according to the question, it was 26,500. And we want it to be brought down 28,000 according to point number 3. So carry down 28,000. So income statement is going to be credited with 1,500. That's point number 3. Point number 2. In order to fund a new project, the company decided to sell its leasehold property. This is on 1st October 09, and remember we're going to March 10. From that date, it commenced a short-term rental of an equivalent property. Leasehold property has been marketed by a property agent at a price of 40 million, which is considered a reasonably achievable price on that date. The expected cost to sell had been agreed at five. Recent market transactions suggest that actual selling price is achieved and the current market conditions are 15% less than the value at which they're marketed. And there's a the effect from March 2010 the property has not been sold. Okay, let's all get this leasehold property. Per the question, we've got cost of 45000 and we've got accumulated depreciation of 6000 so we've got 39,000's worth. This is 45,000 with a 15 year life, so it's 3,000 per annum depreciation. And we need therefore to take six months depreciation up to 1st October. So that gives me now a carrying value of 37,500. This is being marketed at 40,000, but it's got a uh, cost to sell of 40 million. It costs to sell a 500,000, so it's got an NRV, net realizable value, <coughs> 40 million minus 0.5, 39.5. And it's valued at, it's carrying value at 1st October is 37.5, so we need to be thinking about impairing it. And it needs to come down to. It's been marketed, it's got NRV of 39.5, it's got a carrying value of 37.5, and we are selling it for 15% less than, or we're likely to sell it, 15% less than 40 million, which is 34 million. That's 40 million minus 15% of 40 million. But we've also got the selling cost to come off there, so 33.5 is the likely NRV. That's the market price, that's the price at which we're marketing it. So 33.5, we therefore need to impair by 4 million. Okay. And then point number oh, still on point number two, we've got all this plant and equipment. P and E, PPE is depreciate fifteen percent reducing balance. That's sixty seven thousand five hundred cost. Accumulated depreciation is twenty three five. Gives me forty four thousand reduced balance and fifteen percent of that is six thousand six hundred depreciation on the PPE. No depreciation items have been charged on any non current asset for the year. depreciation and all charged to cost of sales. Cost of sales, cost of sales. And that gets me to point number one. Five percent loan was issued on first of Jan first of April. This is a full year. Face value of 20 million. Direct costs of issue were 200,000. These have been charged to admin. They shouldn't have been. Uh, reduce admin by 500,000. Uh, so that's going to be credit admin and debit the loan. So reduce the loan by 500,000. Okay, the direct cost of Lisbon charge to admin and the loan note will be redeemed at a substantial premium. Effective finance cost is 10%. So we borrowed 20 million, but 
500,000 was to come off that because that was the cost of the, the direct cost of issue. So actually, 19,500,000 is what we've borrowed. And 10% for a 40 year, because it is a 40 year, is 1950. So that's 21,450 is the loan, but without any account taken of any interest. And if I look at the trial balance, I've got interest of six months in there, which I need to accrue. I've got 500 interest paid, and I need to accrue another 500 interest. That's a thousand that I'm going to have to uh, deal as a finance charges. So a thousand off here gives me 20,450 and that should be then the long term loan on the balance sheet. Now what Steve Scott often does is he will mess around with the loan interest but he's already done that on this question sometimes he'll put in loan interest and he won't identify that it's just for six months so he'll just put loan interest paid 500 and not specifically point out that you need to make this accrual but he's, he seems to just more recently he seems to be being a bit fairer on this and he's putting in the fact that it is only for six months but I've done the workings I can now go into what is it statement of uh, income statement and then the financial position. So let's have a look at the income statement. I need the figures in front of me. So, statement of income. <coughs> Revenue from the question. Revenue 400,000. But we've also got um, that 8 million to deduct from that, which was the cut off error. And I've also got the construction contract. And the construction contract revenue, what do we say? We worked it out higher up. Construction contract revenue was 12 million, wasn't it? Uh, and I think that's it for revenue. That's all we need to worry about. So that's um, 404. And then cost of sales. Cost of sales from the question is 294. Uh, but we've also got some depreciation and impairment. We've got 6, six depreciation which is plant and equipment. We've got three depreciation on the construction contract asset. Um, we've got uh, four impairment on the investment property. Uh, 1,500 depreciation on the investment property. Um, and we've got the contract costs. The contract costs were, I can't remember those, contract costs, contract costs were 9.6, cost recognition. Contract costs 9.6. So if I add that up, that's um, 9, 6, 13, 6, 14, 6, 15, 1, 24, 7, 24, 7, 24, 318, 318, 700, we added 294, 300, 12, 16, 17, yeah, it looks like it, 318, 700. Okay. Uh, 9 and 5, 14, 2, 85,003. That 3, that 3 is the depreciation on the asset and it's already included, 315. That 3 was already included in the contract costs. So that's 88,300. Ah. Admin expenses. 
Admin expenses per the question is 34,002, but I've taken out 500, uh, the cost of the loan issue, so 33,700. Distribution costs from the question is 26,4 and there's been no adjustment. So 60,100, 28,200. Now I've got these bits and pieces. We've got finance charges. That's loan interest. That's 500 plus 500. That's 1,000. And then we've got the increase in the loan, which is the effective interest. That was another 950, wasn't it? And then we've also got bank interest. That's hidden away there, isn't it? Bank interest of 200. So finance charge is twenty one fifty. It gives me twenty six thousand and fifty. Um, going down the list, investment income one point two. That's added, and we got that fair value through profit and loss, haven't we? Through profit and loss, that was what twenty. It was one thousand five hundred. So 28,750 and that should give me PBT tax we worked out. Let me go back up and see what the tax figure was. <clears throat> tax we worked out to be Tax nineteen thousand nine five zero. Can't think of anything else. Just let me check through the trial balance. Do, 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 do. Tick 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 tick. Dividend no. Remember the dividend no. Just remember that dividend. Profit after tax. Uh, statement of financial position. What have we got for that? We've got an asset held for sale, which was the investment property, which we've written down to 33.5, didn't we? Just let me check that. Just let me check 33.5. Investment property. Where is it? There, 33.5. And I've included the 4,000 in cost of sales. There's the 4,000 in cost of sales. Okay, so 33.5 asset held for sale. Uh, then we've got PPE. Uh, according to the question, it's 67.5. But we've got depreciation to come off that of 23.5. And this year's depreciation, another 6,600 to come off. So that was 40,000 minus 2,6, 37,400. Then we've got uh, investments, investments that found value through profit and loss, that was 28. And we've got also the construction contract plant, which did cost us 12, we've depreciated it by, so 9,000 left on the construction plant. So 30, 60, 70, 80, 90, 107,900. Just check that, Rajesh Inventory. Inventory it was right, wasn't it? Inventory was right at 48,000. It was a cut-off mistake. Receivables, per the question, is 40,700. But we've also got that receivables under the construction contract. The un on build work in progress is really what it is. The construction that was, um, I'm going to have to go all the way back up here. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Construction contract receivable, 13.4. And I don't think there are any other. The bank, no, the bank's overdraft. Watch that. Watch out for that. 
it's most likely that the bank in a trial balance will be an overdrawn bank account. He, uh, he very frequently makes the bank account overdrawn. 40, 80, 90, 101, 102,100. That gives me 210,000. 210,000. Have I added that up right? Ah! I've seen a mistake. I've seen a mistake. I know I've made a mistake. I'm going to leave it. Um, on purpose, I'm going to leave it. I'll come back to it and change it. Shares. Top of the page, 60,000. Uh, retained earnings. We started retained earnings with 38,004. And we've made some profits this year, 19,950. So plus 19.95. But we've paid out a dividend. Beware. We've paid out that dividend. So that's uh, 9,950. That's just 50 short of 10,000. So it's 48,350. 48,350. No premium to worry about. So that's 108,350. And then we've got deferred tax. It was 4.2 from memory. And we've got the loan. The loan. Which was um, 20,000, but then it was plus a bit, wasn't it? Um, so it's 20,000 plus 950 minus 500, I think. So that's 20,450. And I think that's it for the long term debt. That's 24,650. 133. Current liabilities. Current liabilities. Payables have got 52,000. And oh, I'll deal with them separately. 52,000. We've got the current tax. And that was 12 million, wasn't it? Um, oh, we've got the overdraft. Uh, that's 4.5. Am I missing anything? I missed any. Oh, we've got the accrued interest. Accrued interest of 500. I don't think there's anything else. Let's just add this up and see where we're up to. Uh, 10, 12, carry 1, 10, 202,000. So I'm um, 202,000, I'm 8,000 different now then. Have we come across 8,000 anywhere? Look in the question, is there an 8,000 anywhere in the question? No, there is no 8,000 in the question, 8 million in the question that I can see. No. No, eight million. Is there a four million in the in the question that I've maybe got on the wrong side? And again, just looking at that, there isn't. Okay, let me go through my workings and see if I've got everything. <coughs> Start right up at the top. Contract. Do I have an eight million anywhere? <coughs> no. Oh, there's an eight million. No, that's part of cost recognition. Tax. No eight million there. No four million on the wrong side. Oh, look there, eight million. Revenue, did I reduce revenue by eight? Did I reduce receivables by eight? Revenue and receivables by eight. <coughs> yep, there's the eight in revenue. Did I receive, reduce receivables by eight? No. So it's 40,700 minus eight. Which is thirty two seven. That comes down by eight, that's uh, ninety four one. And that gives me two hundred and two. And that deals with that. Now then, the time is seventeen ten. What time do we say we have to finish? Seventeen twenty six. That's okay. Step by step by step, working at a time. Clear workings, show the effect of your workings. 
make sure that the marker can follow what you've done, any possibility that they can't, you run the risk of losing marks. So make sure that you maximise your mark earning potential. Okay, that's question two dealt with. So we've now done question one, question two and question five. Got question three and question four still to do and we'll be doing those very shortly.